So, what? All right, here we go. <clears throat> so the maps are kind of tricky this week, but we'll be fine. Ooh. All right, so let's start labeling our water. Medzi, Black Sea, Caspian Sea, Persian Gulf, Red Sea, Atlantic Ocean. All right. We got Paris over here. We have Rome right over here. What period are we now in? Three. We have a dot right here. I'm going to draw a line to it. Constantinople. All right. We have the Caucasus Mountains here. So if the uh, falling of Rome happened at the end of period two, what time period do we call this in Europe? The Dark Ages, mid, uh, the Middle Ages, medieval times, all that stuff. That's what's happening on, going on in Western Europe. Is what's happening in Western Europe the same thing as what's happening in Eastern Europe? No. Which one's doing uh, better? Who can raise your hand and tell me what side's doing better? Anisha. Eastern. Why is Eastern doing better than Western? No, they still got problems, but like, what makes problems less of a problem, Carlota? Yeah, Constantinople, which is a world trade Yeah, they have what? What does that mean then? What does that translate to? Trade. No, don't tell me trade. What does it translate to, Jamal? Centralized power. No, what does it mean, Reina? They have a lot of what? No, damn it, no, think about it. Okay, they have a lot of trade. What does it mean, Krishma? They're wealthy. They have lots of money, people. If you have lots of money, do your problems seem that big of a deal? No, you can throw money at it and solve problems, correct? You have invaders, so guess what they do? They build a massive wall around their city. Guess what has less of a problem now? Invaders, because they have a massive wall around their city because they're making so much money. Okay? All right. So we got the Tigers River over here. What? Your quiz? Yeah. Oh, okay. They're all in there. Jerusalem is over here. We got Baghdad right here. All right, we got Medina, which is a major city for Islam. We've got Mecca, which is the most important city in Islam. Right there. Uh, we've got Persia over here. And we have the Indus River right here. Perfect. Then we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boxes. So write it way over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What are you talking about? Like the, not the quiz test. You mean a test or a quiz? There's a big difference. Grab a scan, try and take a seat. Which one? Islam to 632. So write down the this list right here. Don't start coloring. Don't start doing anything. Just write down the names, please. No, okay, 632. If you're ahead of me, just sit there and wait. Islam is 661. Islam to 733. The Abbasid Caliphate. Uh, 
about 800. Now you should have heard the word caliphate before. Where have you heard the word caliphate before? No one's heard the word caliphate before. Okay, uh, have you ever heard of a small group called uh, ISIS? Yeah, ISIS says they're starting a brand new caliphate. <laughs> so all of this is coming back and is affecting. They look at the Abbasid Caliphate when they are justifying their incredibly harsh and destructive rule uh, and their destruction of regions by war and death and all that stuff. They justify it by saying the Abbasid Caliphate, which is the first caliphate, is the justification that essentially Allah allows this and that's why they say that they're killing in the name of Allah because Allah allowed this to occur because of um, all this stuff. So we're going to start clarifying some of the historical references that people like ISIS make. Do you really think Allah wants people to go around killing people in their name? No, no. Islam is actually like a really beautiful, peaceful religion. Okay? The problem with, it, the problem with Islam is the same problem Christian, Christians have. Okay? We have the Ku Klux Klan here in the United States, which we're surging in power apparently. Okay? They used the Bible to justify the lynching of black Americans. Do you think the word of God wants to be used to justify abuses of power and death? No. So do you think the Ku Klux Klan represents Christianity and your Christian beliefs if you're Christians? Huh? What's that? Because I think they're psychopaths. <laughs> okay. It's the same thing that's happening with Islam. You have some radical group called ISIS, then you have all of your other terrorists who are using Islam as a weapon, just like Timothy McVeigh, who blew up the Oklahoma City building, okay? Just like a Ku Klux Klan, who are using the religion to justify their destruction. It's the same thing. If the Ku Klux Klan doesn't sum up your religion, ISIS does not represent Islam. It's important that you can distinguish the two. All right, here we go. 6.32 is when Muhammad dies. For the, uh, I almost said for the first time. <laughs> oh. No, Muhammad only dies once. He doesn't get resurrected. For me, it's going to be purple. So when Muhammad dies in 6.32, this is how big Islam is. Okay, now Medina is a very important place. Uh, this is where, when uh, Muhammad gets kicked out of Mecca, he goes to Medina, lives there for a while. Uh, they live off the land and do all that stuff. Then he surges an attack and comes back to Mecca. There you go. So, that is when Muhammad dies, okay, this is how big. Now, Muhammad is the prophet of Islam. Just like Jesus is a big figure in Christianity, Muhammad is the figure in Islam. All right, so Islam in 661, so 30 years after Muhammad's death, uh, when we have our first caliphate, okay, we're going to start seeing it's going to start spreading very quickly. Now, the reason why Islam is going to start spreading very quickly, as you can see, is because it allows an intimate connection with God. Okay, it allows um, it allows individuals to kind of shape their own religion and their own thoughts, as well as the fact that it's about uh, worshiping and seeing up something bigger than yourself, which is pretty cool. Now, in Islam, they pray five times a day. Has anyone ever been to in a Muslim-dominated country? No? Nor have I. I I'm dying to go to one. Uh, in the middle of the day, the first call to prayer, which I have uh, this song for you. I have it recorded on my computer. Anyway, uh, the first call to prayer is at dawn. So everyone at dawn gets up and pulls out their prayer rugs and they do their prayers facing Mecca. Mecca is the holy city of Islam um, and this is where their most important 
uh, mosque is. The mosque is the whole is the holy site for religious activities. Like for Christianity, we call them churches. In Islam, they call them mosques. There's four or five mosques in uh, the Tampa Bay area. There's one right in downtown, off of Kennedy. Uh, this is going to be Islam in 733. So, would you say Islam is popular? Yes, it is incredibly popular. Okay, now, I do want to point out, over here in Spain... We have a huge Muslim population. Anyone here ever been to Spain? Have you been to Basque? Oh, that's pretty cool. So Barcelona is toward the northern center part. The southern tip of Spain is super heavily influenced. The Muslims are, gonna, uh, are going to dominate uh, Spain for about 900 years. So do you think that Spain has a huge Muslim influence on it? Their architecture in the southern part of Spain is in the Basque region is uh, apparently incredibly beautiful. It is definitely Islamic based. It's geocentric design. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, so as we're seeing, Islam is incredibly popular. Here we are way over here. All right, so then we have the Abbasid Caliphate. The Caliphate is going to uh, be the first government that truly embraces Islam and uses it as its core foundation. They are going to control. everything from here. Now the interesting thing during this time period is that the Muslims are actually going to be the most advanced people on the planet during all of period three and for a good part of period four. Um, they're the ones who discover, um, they're the ones who are going to be able to do surgery. They have ice in the middle of the desert, like they're that technologically advanced. Um, they have uh, the ability to do surgery. They have the ability to do dentistry. Um, they are going to be the most educated people in the world. They have the Dar al Islam, which is one of the largest collections of libraries in the world. Um, they are going to be the being. A, they are the ones who are able to build the largest structures in the world. And uh, it's pretty cool. So they got a lot going on. Uh, Abu, uh, not Abu Bakar. Oh, I can't remember his name at the moment. All right, so that is the Abbasid Caliphate, which is going to play a big role here. I'm going to use pink for my Byzantine Empire. Now, the Byzantine Empire call themselves uh, Romans. However, they're not Romans because they're Byzantines. So, over here, there we go, let me zoom in. The Byzantines call themselves New Romans. They're not New Romans, they're Byz Byzantines. However, they try to replicate the Roman Empire as much as possible. Okay, they are going to be the reason why we have so many Roman Empire relics. Uh, documents, all of that stuff uh, is because of the Byzantines. Now, the most famous leader of the Byzantines is a guy named Justinian. He's a pretty cool guy. Um, he's married to um, Theodora, his wife. His wife is uh, a burlesque dancer. What is a common name for a burlesque dancer? A stripper, yes! You may know that job as a stripper. Yes, she is beautiful. And that's how she catches the eye of the son of the king. 
And uh, But don't judge my girl Theodora by her job. She is actually an incredibly skilled politician. And when she marries Justinian, she inserts herself into politics. And she is going to be the hero of the Byzantine Empire. Uh, she is going to be able to improve the lives of all of her citizens because she knows what it's like to be poor. She is one of 15 children. Do you think her family had a lot of money or no? No. So she knows what it's like to actually live and uh, live in poverty. So she spent the rest of her life trying to improve people's positions. This is the Lombard Kingdom. It's going to just exist on the peninsula, the Italian peninsula. And so she's like just a boss chick, man. Like she's awesome. And then I am going to use yellow for my Frankish kingdom. And obviously they're going to be in France. Now what religion is going to be incredibly popular over in Western Europe? Christianity, except for in Spain, where obviously we have Islam as taking over with the Moors. All right. That's it for me on this side. You have one minute to color in your water and your land. If you can get it done, then you're done with the front. Oh, oh, I'm just kidding. I lied to you. I lied. Byzantine Empire, you need to color in Turkey. So the Byzantine Empire controls what major city? Constantinople. So do you think the, Byzantine, uh, the Byzantines are wealthy or poor? Well, they, they have a lot of time to, and a lot of money to build a lot of art. Also going to do a lot of public works projects. You have 30 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Flip it. If we have time, you can come back and finish it. All right. This map is also a lot of layers. I like period three. I'm not going to lie. I like period three. All right, here we go. Sea of Japan. Sea of Japan right now is not a sea you'd want to be in. Um, it's pretty crazy. They're, they're doing... So I'm friends with uh, an American who lives in Japan. She is teaching at a uh, army base in Japan. After World War II, we have bases in Japan. Okay, so she's teaching there. Last week, they had four drills, four drills for a missile attack. Is that not the craziest thing? Could you imagine? And what they do is they get underneath their desks. I mean, what else are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? Because they have the siren that goes off. Have you heard the siren? Have you seen on the news and stuff? When North Korea sends off a lock, uh, uh, one of their missiles, it has been, happened like three or four, uh, three times now. They've sent missiles over the country of Japan just to intimidate them. Because Japan is the closest ally the United States has, except for South Korea, and they're threatening them and all this crap. So, like... They are practicing drills, and there's a siren that goes off, and that gives you about 30-second warning if a missile is coming. 
and it's gone off now three times in Japan. So they're doing drills now at school because they're trying to contain, like, keep a normal thing with all this stuff going on. And they are literally doing drills about missile attacks. And you have 30 seconds. What are you going to do with a classroom of kindergartners in 30 seconds? You know what I mean? There's nothing you can do. So they practice getting under their table, even though you and I both know if a missile is going to hit the school, a table isn't going to save you, correct? We know this, but what are you supposed to do? Could you imagine stopping instruction to be like, okay, guys, we're going to do a missile attack drill. Is that not insane? This is 2017. This is 2017. This is insane. What? Well, yeah, that, like, that was in 1950, nope, 1961. We're in 2017. This is insane. <sighs> All right, I'm leaving that whole area right now. It stresses me out. I don't even know how to say it, so we're just going to spell it out. This is the desert. This is Tibet, which is part of what country today? Bye, sweetie. Nope. China. Mongolia is here. Okay, we've got the Yellow River here. What's the nickname of the Yellow River? China. Look at you. All right, we have the Yangtze River down here. Okay, this is Manchuria. We have the Yellow Sea right here. We have the East China Sea. We have the South China Sea. And we have the Bay of Bengal. All right, we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight boxes. So I'm going to put them way over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So you have the NAR state, which is going to be the first uh, empire in Japan. And then you have Silla, which is your first Korean empire. Then you have the Sui, which is the first dynasty post uh, Han. Then you have the Tang dynasty, which follows the Sui. And you have the Jin empire, which is not a dynasty, it's an empire and it's northern China. Then you have the southern Song Dynasty, which we'll get to. Then you have the Song Dynasty, who I really like. Oh, damn it. So the next one is southern Song Dynasty, by the way. So if you've started that, southern Song Dynasty. And then you have your, yes, exit. Uh, and then you had your Song Dynasty, who are super cool. They are doing a bunch of really important things that are going to have impact on the rest. So it's a cultural explosion. So Song Dynasty. The ones like who are doing like foot binding and all that crap, which is pretty cool. And then you have the Grand Canal, which is a very big deal, which we'll be talking about this week. Okay. Let's do the NAR state, and for me it's going to be a dark blue. The NAR state is your first empire in Japan, so it obviously has to be in the Japanese islands, all right, and there you go, that's your NAR state, but it's your first Chinese empire. All right, the next one is the Silla. Uh, they are going to be the foundation of Korean culture. Okay, and they are going to be in the southern tip in what we would call South Korea today. 
All right, then we have the Sweet Dynasty, and they're going to be a light green for me. The Sweet Dynasty are really just known for their engineering skills. They build the Grand Canal. Uh, it's a big deal because it's going to allow trade to flourish. So when we talk about the SWE, they are really just engineers, and that's their big claim to fame. So we're going to start from here. They're going to go here. They go here. Do the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. So they're a little oddly shaped. Don't worry, we're going to layer this like 10 times. So, the Sui Dynasty is going to be the first dynasty post Han Empire. They are engineers, like I said. They are the ones who are going to build a lot more infrastructure in China. They're able to do it. Why? Why can they start building these massive projects? What do they have? Lots of. Guys, think about it. What is China doing? Trading. So they have lots of what? Money. Money. You guys haven't figured out that if you have money, you have way more options? <laughs> if you haven't, good for you. For all the rest of us struggling with no money, we understand this. All right, so you have the Sui Empire. Their big claim to fame is the Grand Canal, which we will draw in a couple minutes. Next empire is the Tang Empire. The Tang are cool, man. They do the civil service exam, which is a huge deal. They also do the equal field system, which is an attempt at land distribution, but it's successful. Unlike our boy, who was unsuccessful at land distribution? Who is it, Greta? Wang Mang. Okay, so the Tang Empire is actually going to be successful at land distribution, which is a huge deal. They are also really good at what, ladies and gentlemen? What can we now see that they're really good at? Well, how do you expand, people? They're conquering. They're a very strong military. So they're going to create major institutions like the civil service exam. They want to make sure the most qualified people were in government. Oh, sorry. Okay. They want to make sure the most qualified people are in government, so they make up a test. And this test is still used today in China. Isn't that cool? It was made in period three. Anyway, it's not the same exact test, and it's based on Confucianism. Okay, so you would take a test. Anyone can take the test. Obviously, you're going to have more rich kids take the test than poor kids, correct? But anyone can take the test, and it's based entirely on your score, whether you get a job in the government or not. Isn't that great? Because remember, the jobs in your government are going to be the most... Um, uh, are going to be the most reliable and usually typically some of the best paid just because of the bureaucracy. Okay, it's also an, a status thing. So you had to test into it. Now to take the civil service test was a three-day test. They lock you in a room with a bunch of paper and a pen and some questions and you spend three days. You bring your own mat, you bring your own food, and you bring your own bucket for a toilet. And you are locked in the room, and you sit there, and you write, and you write, and you write, and you write, and you sleep, and you sleep, and you eat, and you write, and you write for three days. <laughs> okay? And then when you come out, they grade your tests, and then they see if you are going to be given a government job. Now, if you're given a government job, it completely will transform your life uh, just because of now uh, government security. So it's pretty cool. All right. So for me, the Jin Empire is going to be uh, purple. All right. Here's Manchuria. And then we have the Song Dynasty. Song Dynasty, for me, is going to be this. Oh, I'm going to do jump to Song. I'm not going to color in my box. It's just going to be an outline. So the Song Dynasty is going to be like the cultural center 
of Chinese culture. They are the ones who come up with um, a lot of what we would identify as really Chinese beliefs and art and culture and customs and stuff like that. Now, the Song Dynasty is obviously not very big. Would you agree? However, it is probably the wealthiest time China has ever existed. And that's saying a lot because China is pretty damn wealthy at this point, correct? But they are going to be the wealthiest under the Song. So much so, they suspend taxes. The government doesn't even collect money because they don't need the money. So they're like, ah, screw it, keep it. We don't need taxes anymore. That would just be the best. I spend a lot of money every year on taxes. I would really appreciate that. Huh? Uh, for me, I have uh, yellow for the Southern Song Dynasty. If you really can't see it, it's really not that big of a deal. They're just down here, which makes sense. The Song Dynasty, the southern half of it. And then you have the Grand Canal. Now, the Grand Canal is actually like a really, really, really big deal. It is built by the Sui. As you can see, the rivers in China pretty much go east to west. Would you agree? Okay, I mean, there's a little bit of northern movement to a degree. However, it goes east to west. With all of the trade that's happening in China, uh, there needs the fastest way to move things. Is it by overland or over water? Water, absolutely. So when we talk about um, moving as many goods as the Chinese are, uh, what we're going to see is they need to come up with a faster way. I happen to have a marker, so I'm going to use it. I'm just drawing a line in the center of that box. Okay. So what they realize they need to do is they need more ways to move goods in China. The faster you can move goods, the better things are. We see this in Puerto Rico. If we can move more goods in Puerto Rico, would Puerto Rico be better? Absolutely. So the Grand Canal is going to go from north to south and allow goods and resources to be moved faster. Now this region in China, northern China, is where most of your silk producers are coming from. Makes sense that you would want it to be easier to be uh, have goods move through. All right, that's it. I'll give you one minute to color. So the Sui are going to build the Grand Canal, and it's a very big deal. It connects north to south. Okay, and of course, they're going to... Does China use slaves? No, they use conscription labor. Uh, do you think building the Grand Canal is going to be easy or hard to do, ladies and gentlemen? All right, so do you think they're going to abuse their conscripted labor? Do you probably assume that's going to cause their downfall? Look at you people figuring it out. How much time do I have? Eight minutes, perfect. So you've got about 30 seconds, and then I'm going to transition to notes. Done, so are you. You are my marker, Bronson. As soon as you finish, everyone's done. All right, let's go. Take out your notes. Let's go. You need to have this finished color, uh, finished and ready to turn in by Tuesday. Is late uh, Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. They are due sharp and promptly then. All right, take out your notes. Let's go. Islam, Islam, Islam. Here we go. Okay. Islam is a huge deal because, A, or do we have a Christian versus Islamic issue today in 2017 around the world? Yes, because terrorists are using this religion as a way of manipulating and uh, taking advantage of Western society. Okay, so Islam is incredibly important for you to understand. 
what the religion is so you understand a little bit about how it's set up and how it's supposed to work. Historically, major events happen between Muslims and Christians. Crusades would be a perfect example of that. We also have plenty of other examples, so it's very important for both 2017, understanding how we are the way we are today, and of course, understanding major historical events. All right, so here we go. So Muhammad. Okay, in Christianity, we have a guy named Jesus, born, walks around, tells people how great the, uh, God is and all that stuff, correct? Muhammad is the Jesus of Islam, okay? So Muhammad is born in 570 CE to a merchant family in Mecca. So if you're a merchant family, are you poor? No, you're middle class, ladies and gentlemen. They're merchants. They're on the Silk Road. Things are happening. They're doing pretty well, okay? They're doing pretty well. They're not wealthy, but they're doing pretty well. His parents die. We're not really sure how, but both of his parents die, and he's on his own uh, at the age of, like, 13 or 14. Anyway, he gets married to a much older lady, uh, and this secures him financially, and, um, with this, he has a daughter. He's, like, fifth, uh, he's, like, 17 or 18 when he gets married, and his wife's, like, 31, 32. They have a daughter. That plays a big role here later on. Anyway, so, he gets married to a widow in 595, works as a merchant, uh, he's familiar with paganism, okay? Why is he familiar with paganism? What major uh, empire just collapsed? Rome. Hans aren't pagan. Pagan believe in multiple gods. So Rome has collapsed. Everyone's familiar with the Roman gods, correct? Yes, because the Roman Empire conquered it. Christianity is obviously kicking it because it was former Roman territory. So guess what? Obviously Christianity is spreading. Judaism. Why is he familiar with Judaism in Mecca? Because that's where Judaism started, was in the Middle East, correct? All these things are being labeled, and uh, all these things are happening here. You have to understand, the Middle East is literally the center of most religions, especially all of your monotheistic. So, what's going to happen on 610? You need to write that down, and you need to know it. 610 is the official start of Islam. Muhammad gets... His first vision. Okay, so Allah speaks to him for the first time in 610. This is a major turning point in world history. Okay, for the fact of look at how much influence Islam has had in the world. Within the next 30 years, Islam will be the most popular religion in the world for the first time. Christianity has become has been the largest and most popular religion since the 1200s. It's a long time, correct? It will be unseated within our lifetime, if I make it that long, um, in the next 30 years. It's a big deal. It's a very popular religion. He has his first vision in 610. It is he is going to be warned of the vision by an angel named Gabriel. Now, all of you good Christians out there, how do you know an angel named Gabriel? Hold on with a hand. Callie. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the new Lord King. Yeah? Sorry, I'm clearly not talented at singing. But you all know the story of Jesus, right? You're familiar with it? You know, an angel comes and says a king will be born and all that crap. And then the angel goes around and spreads the world that spreads the word that the king is born and all that. That's Gabriel. Okay? You need to understand. Look and listen. Look and listen. Look and listen. Okay. Christianity is based in, based completely off of what? Judaism. It's based completely off of it, and then they add their own little spin to it, correct? Yes? Okay. Old Testament is in both the Torah and in the Bible. New Testament is what the Christians have done moving forward beyond Judaism, yes? Okay. Islam is the third chapter. In Islam, Jesus is a prophet. Jesus is a really, really heavily influential person to anyone who is Muslim. Anyone who is Muslim is like, damn, Jesus was a great guy. The reason is, is because Islam shares the Bible is the first half of the Quran, ladies and gentlemen. The whole thing, the Old Testament, the New Testament, it's the beginning of the Quran. 
when Muhammad speaks to Allah for the first time in 610, Allah is telling Muhammad the final part of the story. Everyone in both Judaism, Christianity, and Islam believe they're adding more to the story. Abraham is the foundation of Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. These prophets, Jesus uh, um, and Muhammad, are getting more of the story, and that's what their religion is based off, that unique component. Uh, Muhammad knew Jesus, not knew, like they didn't kick it together, like they didn't like hang out. But, like, he knew of Jesus and Jesus' life story and stuff like that and, like, saw him and respected him. Allah is going to give Muhammad more of the story, and that's what makes Islam Islam. Does that make sense? So anyone who says a Muslim, you know, they don't understand Christianity and they hate Christians, is that true at all? No, their foundation of Islam is Christianity. The foundation of both Christianity and Islam is what? Judaism. Yes, okay? If you are a Christian, you share a lot of the values of a Muslim. It's just the differences. Does that make sense? Just like if you're a Christian, you share a lot of the same values of Jews because you have the same foundation. There you go. All right, goodbye. Oh, I can turn off my recording now. It's not possible.